is the reason education sucks, and it's the same reason that it will never, ever, ever be fixed. It's never going to get any better. Don't look for it. Be happy with what you got. Because the owners of this country don't want that. I'm talking about the real owners now. The big, re the wealthy, that, the real owners, the big wealthy business interests that control things and make all the important decisions. Forget the politicians. They're, they're, they're an irrelevant. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. I really haven't seen this many people in one place since they took the group photographs of all the criminals and lawbreakers in the Ronald Reagan administration. We'll be gone. Dinosaurs had their chance. There was an age of reptiles. Now it's the age of primates. And who knows, maybe it'll be the insects next. It's not up to us. It's not divinely ordained. We're here on chance. And we're going to go away. And the planet will heal. The planet will heal because that's what it does. 225 different people in the Ronald Reagan administration have either quit, been fired, been arrested, indicted, or convicted of either breaking the law or violating the ethics code. It heals itself. It's a self-healing organism. It changes and grows. It'll incorporate all of our dead cities into itself, and it will become something else. But it will still be going around the sun for at least a few more billion years or whatever. 225 of them. And Edwin Meese alone... Edwin Meese alone has been investigated by three separate special prosecutors, and there's a fourth one waiting for him in Washington right now. So, we're, this whole thing, we have to save the planet by not putting diapers in the landfill. That's, that's too short-sighted. It doesn't do anything. You have to change yourself. And we'll never do that, because the dollars now, it's everybody wants a dollar and a toy. Three separate special prosecutors have had to look into the activities of the Attorney General. And the Attorney General is the nation's leading law enforcement officer. <laughs> Everybody's got a cell phone that'll make pancakes and rub their balls so they don't, they, nobody wants to rock the boat, nobody wants to change, don't change anything. And we're, we're in a nice downward glide. They own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the state houses, the city halls. They got the judges in their back pockets. They're against street crime, providing that street is in Wall Street. <laughs> And the Supreme Court decided about a year ago that it's all right to put people in jail now if we just think they're going to commit a crime. I think we squandered the great gifts. I think humans were given great, great gifts. Walking upright, binocular vision, opposable thumb, large brain, making tools. Make tools, large brain, large brain, make better tools. Talk, have to link language. You take this foot in here. We learned language. The brain got bigger language. We grew. It's called preventive detention. All you've got to do now is just think they're going to commit a crime. Well, if we'd have known this shit seven or eight years ago, we could have put a bunch of these Republican motherfuckers directly into prison. And they own all the big media, media news, all the big media companies, so they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls. Keep in mind, these Reagan people are the ones that were going to get government off our backs. Remember that? That was the rhetoric of the 1980 campaign. We'll get government off your backs and out of your lives. Yeah, but they still want to tell you what magazines you can read, and they still want to tell you what rock lyrics you can listen to, and they still want to force your kids to pray in school, and they still want to tell you what you can say on the radio. We had great gifts, and we gave it up all up for both Man uh, for both money and uh, God. God and mammon, both. The FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, decided all by itself that radio and television were the only two parts of American life not protected by the free speech provisions of the First Amendment to the Constitution. I'd like to repeat that because it sounds vaguely important. They, they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying, lobbying to get what they want. Well, we know what they want. They want more for themselves and less for everybody else. The FCC, an appointed body, not elected, answerable only to the president, decided on its own that radio and television were the only two parts of American life not protected by the First Amendment to the Constitution. And why did they decide that? Because they got a letter from a minister in Mississippi.
crap. So we keep ourselves limited, and then we want a toy and a gizmo and gold, and we want shiny things, and we want something to plug in that'll make big, big, big things for us. And and and, and all that shit is nothing. It's not the Reverend Donald Wildman in Mississippi heard something on the radio that he didn't like. Well, Reverend, did anyone ever tell you there are two knobs on the radio? But I'll tell you what they don't want. They don't want a population of citizens capable of critical thinking. They don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking. They're not interested in that. That doesn't help them. It's called freedom of choice, and it's one of the principles this country was founded upon. Look it up in the library, Reverend, if you have any of them left when you finish burning all the books. And Americans who also had great gifts. When you take the theory of de democratic rule, self-government. Okay, they did. They started off wrong. They owned slaves. They didn't let women vote. They didn't let people who didn't own land vote. Fine, they got off on the wrong foot, but the ideas were good. But we fucking blew that. We polluted it. And speaking of real estate holdings, let's get back to Ronald Reagan and his criminal gang. When last we left them, they were going to get government off our backs. That's against their interest. That's right. You know something? They don't want people who are smart enough to sit around the kitchen table to figure out how badly they're getting fucked by a system that threw them overboard 30 fucking years ago. When they say right to life, they're talking about their right to decide which people should live or die. We polluted it with this stuff, things, material goods, games, gizmos, toys, gadgets. Having possessions, I just got a bigger truck. This is his truck. It's bigger than mine. I'm getting a new truck. It's the old American double standard. You know, say one thing, do something different. They don't want that. You know what they want? They want obedient workers. Obedient workers. People who are just smart enough to run the machines and do the paperwork and just dumb enough to passively accept all these increasingly shittier jobs with the lower pay, the longer hours, the reduced benefits, the end of overtime, and the vanishing pension that disappears the minute you go to collect it. And now they're coming for your Social Security money. And of course, the country is founded on the double standard. That's our history. We were founded on a very basic double standard this country was founded by slave owners who wanted to be free here's a big truck oh i'm getting that one that's what you got a video and a dvd too he don't have a vd i got a dvd you know oh please whatever happened that all of that would happen you know and that's why i'm divorced from it now a group of slave owners who wanted to be free so they killed a lot of white English people in order to continue owning their black African people so they could wipe out the rest of the red Indian people and move west and steal the rest of the land from the brown Mexican people, giving them a place to take off and drop their nuclear weapons on the yellow Japanese people. They want your fucking retirement money. They want it back so they can give it to their criminal friends on Wall Street. And you know something? They'll get it. They'll get it all from you sooner or later because they own this fucking place. You know what the motto of this country ought to be? You give us a color, we'll wipe it out. You got it. When you're born in this world, you're given a ticket to the freak show. And when you're born in America, you're given a front row seat. <laughs> and some of us get to sit there with notebooks. And I'm a notebook gun, uh huh? Oh, oh, oh my God, did you see that? Did you see what he just. So, anyway, about 80 years after the Constitution is ratified, 80 years later, the slaves are freed. Not so you'd really notice it, of course. Just sort of on paper. It's a big club, and you ain't in it. You and I are not in the big club. And by the way, it's the same big club they used to beat you over the head with all day long when they tell you what to believe. All day long, beating you over the head in their media, telling you what to believe, what to think, and what to buy. And that was, of course, during the Civil War. Now, there's another phrase I dearly love. That is a true oxymoron if I've ever heard one. Civil War. Do you think any country could really have a civil war? And I watch the freak show, and I cut my notes, and I make up stuff about it, and I talk about the freaks. And the freaks are all human, and they're like me, and they're all the same. We're all the same. I'm not better. I'm not different. I'm just a part now. I'm separate. I'm over here because I put myself out of the mix. I don't have a stake in the outcome. I'm not a cheerleader. 
for a given outcome now. But what do you expect? Hey, come on, this is a warlike country. We come from that northern European, basically the northern European genes, the blue eyes, those blue eyes. Boy, everybody in the world learned real quick, didn't they? When those blue eyes sail out of the north, you better nail everything down, motherfucker. Good, honest, hardworking people, white collar, blue collar, doesn't matter what color shirt you have on. Good, honest, hardworking people continue. These are people of modest means. Continue to elect these rich cocksuckers who don't give a fuck about them. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't care about you at all. At all. At all. Yeah. You know? Well, everybody in the world learned real quick, didn't they? When those blue eyes sail out of the north, you better nail everything down, motherfucker. Nail it down, strap it down, or they'll grab it. If they can't take it home, they'll burn it. If they can't burn it, they'll fuck it. That's what happened to us. Oh, they say if you scratch a cynic, you'll find a disappointed idealist. And I would admit that somewhere underneath all of this, there's a little flicker of a flame of idealism that would love to see it all change. But it can't do, it can't happen that way. And incremental change, it just seems like the pile of shit is too deep. And it's a warlike country, come on. I mean, forget foreign policy, even the domestic rhetoric is warlike. Everything about our domestic policy invokes the thought of war. We don't like something in this country, we declare war on it. The war on poverty, the war on drugs, the war on crime, the war on AIDS, the war on cancer. We got the only national anthem that mentions fucking rockets and bombs in the goddamn thing, you know what I mean? The table is tilted, folks. The game is rigged, and nobody seems to notice. Nobody seems to care.